very well, currently sitting at five and one. Um, and his Pokemon, or his, his Pokemon going into this event is honestly what I was expecting to see play out way more, having that Kyogre and Zacian next to each other. Yeah, on top of all of Aaron's accomplishments as a uh, as VGC trainer, he's also an ice cream connoisseur, so we know he has great taste, and it looks like he has great taste in Pokemon <laughs> as well, because he has the Kartana there. Uh, who he is heard one you. Of, he who heard you. One of, <laughs> Kartana is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Like, I'm not even kidding. In Alola, through those three years of VGC, there wasn't a single team I brought to an event that did not have Kartana, and it's just so strong. Uh, right now, most of the format, people are using Kartana with Assault Vest, just so it can try to take a, uh, spe a special attack, at least one of them, and then when you Dynamax, of course, you get the double HP to help you live it even longer. But a very offensive Pokemon, great uh, move coverage, access, especially as a Dynamax option with Max Steel Spike, Max Knuckle potentially, uh, could also even do um, Max Overgrowth as well, right? Obviously, same type of attack bonus, so. I would love to see it. He does have two grass types on there uh, and against VC's team with Cinderace. That could be pretty strong for VC. Yeah, and I, I'm i so curious to see that Cinderace there. You know, I think Cinderace uh, with the Libero hidden ability allows it to change to whatever type of move it's currently using, similar to uh, Protein on the Greninja back in the day. Uh, really was a very popular choice back in some earlier series in Sword and Shield. Uh, you know, as soon as those hidden abilities were unlocked for the starter Pokemon, you know, all of a sudden there was Rillaboom and Cinderace running around everywhere. Uh, sorry, Inteleon, maybe someday. Uh, <laughs> Inteleon has more success in TCG than in That's uh, true, than that's true. You can't have it all. But um, it, to see Cinderace now in a format with so many Kyogre running around with a Kyogre on the same team nonetheless, it makes me wonder just how much, or what exactly is the Cinderace going to do? You know, if you think back to previous formats, it gets access to Bounce, which turns into Max Airstream. Uh, you can give it Max Darkness off of a Sucker Punch. You know, it gets some nice fighting type moves that you can take advantage of. Uh, so there are a lot of options for it, but, you know, going into a matchup on your own team, knowing that there's a possibility for Rain to be up on the field, it just makes me wonder if he is going to rely on the Fire Typing, and is, is he going to rely on it for the opposing Kartana? But right now, we're just seeing a very, very common uh, Kyogre lead on both these trainers. Yeah, for Vichy Vasudevan on the bottom of your screen with Whimsicott Kyogre, and then Aaron Trailer on the top with a uh, Kyogre Whimsicott as well. Both of these trainers are 5-1. and one. Remember, this is round seven. There are eight rounds today in Swiss. Uh, so if you, you know, the winner of this just will be even closer to, to making it to top cut. The loser most likely will not make it to cut. Yeah, and the most important thing to keep an eye out for right now are the items on these Pokemon. Uh, Tailwind will mean that Aaron's Kyogre is able to move first with that Water Spell, but is that a Choice Scarf? Is it a different item? We'll have to see. The Kyogre on Vichy's side of the field was able to hold on pretty well through that Water Spell at max health, but Aaron's Kyogre took even less damage. So good indication, I think, from this turn one that we're looking at some bulky Kyogre from both these trainers. and. Uh, really looking at where the metagame has landed today, I, I can't say I'm too surprised. You know, we've seen Kyogre holding Mystic Water. We've seen Kyogre um, holding Choice Scarves or two. Uh, but I think that when you're going into a tournament like this, when you're looking for those consistent wins, you know, to give yourself the best option of getting championship points, of making cut, uh, having that bulk and just giving yourself the ability to still use Water Spout to great effectiveness, uh, but also stay around on the field a little bit longer, be a little comfier is definitely... Uh, the key thing to emphasize. So uh, the one thing I am a little bit curious about now, though, is we see the matching Tailwind come up from Vichy. Is this Whimsicott's Moonblast going to make a difference in how this turn is going to shake out? Kyogre is able to take the Moonblast there. Does not do too much damage. Uh, this Water Spout is not doing a lot, though. Even Whimsicott hangs on with three HP. So is VC's Kyogre choice locked into the Water Spout, potentially, because you would think it would have changed its item there. But Whimsicott, or move there. Whimsicott gets knocked out. Kyogre hangs on with three HP as well. So Aaron Trailer uh, claims the first knockout of the series. Yeah, you know, honestly, some Kyogre only run Water Spout as their Water Room move, and it's possible that these trainers are both playing these Kyogre as, I know my opponent is trying to figure out my held item. Maybe I'll just fake a Scarf. Maybe I'll just fake one of those choice items so that my opponent 
you know, doesn't know that I also have Thunder and Ice Beam or doesn't know that I don't run Protect or, you know, some of the other sort of nuances you can get into at this team preview. The, the one thing I am very worried about, though, for Vichy right now, though, is we do see the Cinderace out on his side of the field, and there is still a very healthy uh, Kyogre on Aaron's side of the field. You have to think that that Cinderace is not feeling too comfy right now. No, definitely not as a, uh, a Fire-type Pokemon. But remember, thanks to the Libero ability, it can change its typing, potentially, if it goes for a max airstream here, then it would become a flying type Pokemon, uh, and then it would not be weak to those water attacks. And that is what we're gonna see at least on Beach's end here with the G-Max Cinderace. Uh, we don't know what attack is gonna go for, but it is standing on top of that ball and it is ready and roaring to go in this matchup. Aaron will also match with the Dynamax of his own though. Uh, so you would assume in this spot, it would probably be Cartana since Kyogre is, has taken so much damage, but no, I would actually assume wrong there. It's instead the Kyogre so that the Water Spouse doesn't uh, you know, have the or mitigated damage here. Yeah, it could also be a way for Aaron to get around the presence of a possible choice item. So we'll just have to keep paying attention as this turn does reveal the Airstream from that Cinderace. Airstream into Kartana is go is not enough for a knockout. Uh, so would not reveal if it is focused slash Kartana. But then again, you a lot of the times in this format right now, Kartanas are assault vests. So uh, DC might already know that it is potentially not the uh, focus S, but the Max Geyser is a one-hit KO into Cinderace, Ooh. into the flying-type Cinderace, by the way, not even the fire-type one because of that Libero ability. Uh, so that just shows how strong one Kyogre is with its great special attack, but also because of the drizzle, because of the rain being uh, activated, that increased the water damage by 50% there. And even though it was a neutral hit, it was still too much for Cinderace to handle. Yeah, and we've been seeing a lot of trainers use Groudon to great success this weekend so far, but this just goes to show you, you know, Kyogre is still out there and it is still a contender. To uh, Vichy's benefit, you know, Dracosoles is able to hit that Kyogre very, very hard. Uh, usually has that hustle ability, which means its attacks will be boosted, but it will also run a risk of missing. Uh, so depending on his targeting here, this could be a good opportunity for him to try and tie, tie things up. But unfortunately, oh. he already got a miss. Yes, that both beak does not connect. So Kyogre, is, or excuse me, Kyogre goes down thanks to the attack from Kartana that we played. Uh, was able to take it out and Kartana will get the beast boost, increasing its attack by one stage. So that's really uh, a really unfortunate turn for VC because if the bolt peak attack, even though Kartana uh, resists the attack, its HP is so low, it would have been enough to knock it out there. Uh, and then also Aaron Trailer expecting that attack going towards Kyogre instead yes. of Kartana. So that's a big difference in what he was expecting. Yeah, and it looks like we're going to see some more information being hidden by these trainers as Vichy just locks in that forfeit. You know, I think that's a good choice there. Dracozolt isn't exactly a common Pokemon in the metagame right now, though it was very common in previous series, you know. Being able to Dynamax and not have to worry about the accuracy on your max moves really made Hustle shine as an ability. Um, Maybe that's something we see him pivot to in this game too. You know, the Cinderace was an interesting pick. You know, you certainly do want to use Airstream as a form of speed control, especially when your opponent can match your tailwinds. Uh, but that Cinderace just wasn't able to stick around. And uh, really, I think the adaptation, if you're Vichy, is you maybe keep the Dracozol, keep the Whimsicott and the Kyogre, but leave the Cinderace behind. I would love to see that Calyrex Ice make an appearance just because it tends to be a really scary threat. Um, but knowing that Aaron brought Kartana to that game one, I highly doubt we see it game two because Smart Strike would just do so much damage as it is weak to steel type attacks. Yeah, Kartana is just such a problem for uh, for Ice Rider, Calyrex to you know try to focus. Because even if you want to, uh, even if you want to hit it with say a strong neutral attack in uh, Glacial Lands, well. Well, Kartana's best defensive stat is its defense. Its special defense is really what's lacking on that side. So if you want to you hit it there, it's going to be able to take that hit uh, considerably better than you would like and then can return the favor in a smart strike, potentially even a max steel spike as well. Uh, that's what I love, the versatility on uh, those on those two options for Aaron. It pretty much is Kartana and Kyogre when you look at the team, unless, unless a rogue Incineroar decides to Dynamax. Uh, I don't think uh, anyone else would use that option. But on VC side, there's actually a lot of different options with the cow with the Calyrex, Kyogre, uh, Dracozole, and Cinderace as well. I agree with you, Gabby, that bringing Cinderace and 
Quake result in that last match proved very uh, unfortunate for VC because a lot of times Drake is old in Hustle Pokemon, they want to have that Dynamax so yeah. that they don't have what exactly happened, which was missing their attack. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, you sometimes you say high risk, high reward, right? And in a best of three situation, you can get away with running less accurate attacks. Just statistically, you're more likely to be fine. Obviously, that's not always how statistics work, right. as we know. Um, but it, it is something that could have been an out. But going into game two, I don't think you just, I don't think you can afford to take that risk. You know, you need the consistency that the accuracy of your max moves would provide. Assuming that you are still bringing Dracozole and you do want to go for the Dynamax. You know, I think we did see an interesting interaction where, um, you know, Vichy and Aaron were able to stagger the Tailwinds a little bit. So, you know, we saw Aaron go for the Tailwind right away and then we saw Vichy go for the Taunt and then the Tailwind after that turn. Hypothetically speaking, if Vichy is able to do that again and just have that Tailwind up one extra turn, that could be the perfect opportunity for a Drake Assault to come out onto the field, Dynamax, and just start hitting very, very hard. But as we go into the leads of this game too, it looks like we're seeing much of the same, which just begs the question, are we gonna see the same turn play out like we saw in game one? Well, you would think that either of these trainers would wanna switch it up somewhat, uh, because of how ineffective those water attacks were onto the, especially from VC side into Aaron's Kyogre, right? So uh, this time around, VC does not go for the taunt, and instead, both trainers are able to have their tailwind set up. So everybody has their speed doubled on the field. Whimsicott brought down to one HP on that turn, but will hang on thanks to its Focus Sash. Again, the Kyogre did not take that much damage, just like how it was in game one. But because its HP was lower just a little bit there, that Water Spout really wasn't as strong. Uh, and the difference between the two Kyogre's Water Spouts, right? That one went, VC's brought Whimsicott down to one HP and, uh, and Aaron's Water Spout didn't even bring Whimsicott to half. I know, I mean, it's hard to do the math here because the Kyogre on Aaron's side of the field did already take some damage. And as Water Spout's base power is based off of your percentage of health remaining, you do have to take that into account. But that being said, you know, we saw Vichy go for a very early switch on his Kyogre in game one. And now we saw an additional early switch on his Kyogre in game two. I'm not saying anything for certain as it's, I would want to see maybe one or two more damage counts before making an assumption, but that could be an interesting indication of one of those choice items. Just something to keep an eye out for as we watch this play out. Aaron did not, Aaron's Wimsy got knocked out. VC's Wimsy got there with the Moon Blast and Thunder is the reveal on Aaron's end there into the resistance slot into Draco. So, so uh, now this is the point where the Dynamax is still available for Dracozole here. It is, and uh, knowing that Cinderace is the final Pokemon that Vichy brought again to this matchup makes me wonder if we're going to see the Drake Assault try and take it. One thing that Vichy could go for here is you could just go for the max Airstream again, get the speed boost on the Drake Assault, and just hope that you're a little bit luckier the second time around. But that's a huge risk. You're not guaranteed that max lightning to hit because you can't max move, because you Dynamax your Cinderace again, or Gigantic. Yeah, and that is going to be the exact same spot here. So Cinderace will go for the Gigantamax on this turn. Uh, Cotton Spore, though, Ooh. out of Whimsicott, a nice reveal from Aaron, not uh, a move that will harshly lower Cinderace's speed. Uh, so that will be, you know, that actually makes it much worse. It's still a water type, uh, but it won't be knocked out from this spot. Cinderace with the max airstream will change its typing into a flying type, so that will give it a boost thanks to the same type of attack bonus. Oh, goes on to Whimsicott, though, which only had one HP remaining, so that was obviously going to knock out. Does not target down the Kyogre slot, maybe focusing that the Whimsicott being, uh, with Prankster being a little more annoying to deal with, so get that off of the field. But now with the speed boost, uh, that can somewhat negate the Cotton Spore, and Bolt Beak does connect this time around. Kyogre is taken down, so that is two KOs on this turn for BC. Yeah, a great way to knock out the Kyogre and the Whimsicott, bringing Aaron down to his last two Pokemon. But thanks to the fact that Cotton Spore had that prankster priority on the Whimsicott, both of these Pokemon are currently sitting at minus one speed. They were lowered two stages by Cotton Spore, and then Airstream brought them up a single stage. So if Vichy wants to try and rely on the damage dealing powers of these Pokemon, he's going to have to take an attack from a Kartana and a Zacian first, which is going to be very tough to do given just how much chip damage is already down on the board. 
you know, a, a max airstream here would probably be ideal since that would bring both these Pokemon back up to neutral speed. And then maybe you use your third turn of Gigantamax to try and find a third one. But I, I just don't see a situation here where Kartana and Zacian are both unable to get an attack in prior to the Cinderace and the Drake result. Yeah, you know, you got to get your second G-Max attack before you can get the third, right? And I just don't even think in this scenario, VC's able to uh, to have that second attack. Uh, he tends to agree as Cinderace is switching out into the Kyogre slot. So a very ineffective use of Dynamax or Gigantamax here in game two. Now it's time for Aaron to Dynamax. And thanks to that big, beautiful Beast Ball, <laughs> we know that it's going to be our buddy Kartana here with the Dynamax. Uh, such a strong Pokemon and has such a uh, a good ability to sweep through games because of Beast Boost, increasing its attack with every knockout that it gets. That once you get one, you can just keep steamrolling them through. Yeah, and it's really sort of analogous to how a lot of people run Calyrex Ice and Calyrex Shadow. But for now, that Kyogre will be taking a ton of damage from the Behemoth Blade, even though it's resisted. And Kartana utilizing max airstreams of its own. It looks like this Drake result is going to be able to stick around for one more hit, but the question is, who's its target, and will it even land? And it's going to take one more hit, and will it hit its move? Because Bolt Beak goes yeah. into <laughs> the Zashin here. Not enough for a knockout. The Tailwinds will expire on both ends here. And now, uh, Cartana still at full HP, still with two more turns of Dynamax available for Aaron. Is, uh, it was looking in a very strong spot to win this match and potentially go into the winning in in round eight. Yeah, it makes me wonder what exactly the logic was behind switching out the Cinderace so that it could come back in. Um, one thing that comes to mind, the only real priority move that Cinderace gets access to is Sucker Punch, which, assuming your opponent is going for an attacking move, you can attack first. That could be what Vichy is looking for for his out right now. If he can find a way to chip these Pokemon, bring them down into the red, then a Sucker Punch would be easy to clean that up. Unfortunately, though, with the removal of the Drake Assault from the field, that's just going to be that much harder to accomplish. Heartbreaking seeing the Drake Assault get knocked out like that. Such a fun Pokemon. Uh, but Kartana will match Airstream into Kyogre, getting a speed boost, and more importantly, knocking out, gaining, or increasing its attack by one stage because of these boosts. Now, all that is left is that very low health Cinderace, where uh, this Kartana is ready to roll. The rain's up anyway, so, so Cinderace's fire attacks wouldn't even be as strong into it, right? So uh, this is pretty wrapped up for Aaron. Yeah, I mean, the rain did just stop for what it's worth, so... There's an opportunity here, but both these Pokemon on Aaron's side of the field are at plus two speed. Uh, you know, Sucker Punch is good, but it's not knocking out a full health Dynamax Kartana good, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, I think this was very well played by Aaron, just, you know, going for the consistent damage, not letting some of these strategies, you know, the Drake Assault in particular throw him. And uh, it just goes to show you, you know, this is the kind of consistent play you really have to aim for if you want to come back and be a two-time regional championship champion in this cycle. Yeah, that's right. He, he uh, along with Andrew Dean, they have the unique ability to potentially win their 